নমস্কার দেখছেন হাই নিউজ এনপি সলিউশন হাই ক্লাসরুম নিয়ে আমি শ্রীজিতা রয়েছি আপনাদের সঙ্গে আজকের বিষয় হলো ইংরাজি আর আমার সঙ্গে রয়েছেন ইংরাজি শিক্ষিকা সোহিনী ঘোষ স্বাগত জানাবো সোহিনী দিকে নমস্কার শ্রীজিতা এবং সকল দর্শককে আমার নমস্কার জানাই আমি আই আই উইল টেক দিস অপরচুনিটি টু গিভ থ্যাংকস প্রিন্সিপাল স্যার অফ নিলালিনী নন্দেট আর অপূর্ব কুমার বন্দ্যোপাধ্যায় অ্যান্ড আওয়ার প্রেসিডেন্ট ম্যাম শ্রীমতী চন্দ্রিমা ভট্টাচার্য অ্যান্ড দ্য এন্টার ফ্র্যাটার্নিটি of Menalini Dotto Mahavidyapeeth along with your team Hi News this is a brilliant endeavor that you have chosen the platform that we have got to reach out to uh, all the students during this war lifetime so i am shohini ghosh as srijita has already said uh, thank you srijita uh, the topic that i'm going to uh, talk about is uh, i'm i uh, is uh, goblin market which is there in the wbc the wbsu syllabus semester 4 cc 10 in the section of 19th century british literature of west bengal state university okay so uh, i am preferring to do my lecture completely in english since that i think will help you students to uh, enrich yourselves with a new vocabulary this is a very strange kind of a situation where i have to look at the screen and teach and you are not there to give the reactions so i hope uh, you you will understand please try to listen patiently so uh, i have i have prepared since there is nothing to communicate with i have prepared a slide for you a ppt and i would like to share my screen um to show you a few images without which this lecture will become incomplete um uh srijita uh, can you tell me apni ki dekhte pacchen ha ekdom i am ki ami dekhte pacchi ha 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 so i will begin this slide show from beginning so uh this is uh christina rossetti's goblin market a poem which has been written by one of the feminist poets of the first order christina rossetti goblin market and this is a general discussion i had initially thought about doing it on symbols but then i thought that um, a general discussion would be much more helpful i want you to look at these pictures which were uh, sketched which were painted by none other than the pre raphaelite poet dante gabriel rossetti the elder brother of christina rossetti okay uh, we will we will come back to these uh, pictures later so before beginning from the very beginning giving you a context i'm so sorry i think uh, uh, yes beginning from the beginning again uh this is the context uh, so uh, uh, a text should be analyzed from the context first so this is a text of the victorian age which as it is written there which uh, stretches from 1837 to 1901 a wonderful age a long age where a lot of things were happening there was industrial revolution there was a growth of economy which led to the great exhibition of 1851 okay uh, there were the hungry 40s there were many labor rules that begin during this time there is the uh, creation of slums during this time the emptying of all the uh, all the rural areas and the people coming to uh, the cities and the slums are being created with bad condition bad working conditions and there is uh, there are diseases epidemics like tuberculosis okay which which became very very prominent and uh, we also find the rise of the middle class so this is the 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 middle class which is holding to this middle class morality okay and there is a lot of moral restraint you should be doing this you, that should not be done so there are very uh, prominent rules during this time 
and this is also the time when charles darwin is saying uh, in 1859 in his very famous book origin of species that man was an animal in the beginning so the ancestor of man was an ape so you have a complete deconstruction of the religious ideas that uh, the human beings grew up with in their minds that man created adam first and then eve first okay from the point of view of christianity so we all become animals now and this entire huge age comes to an end with sigmund freud and the publication of interpretation of dreams and with this book we usher into the modern age right uh, so uh, and and the point that i have not mentioned is the victorian woman okay so the victor victorian woman during this time is a very unique kind of a character where she should be very domestic very docile there is not much profession left for her and the ones who were writing the bon bronte sisters george eliot they were basically uh, women writers who were taking up male names it is very significant that pride and prejudice though this is pride and prejudice was published in in a, a bit before and uh, that was before this uh, victorian age begins so uh, it was uh, when jane austen was writing okay she had to uh, pride and prejudice was her first novel but uh, the publishers did not publish it at the first go because they said ah a woman has written this this is so romantic this is trash this is so gross so women's writings were always judged Uh, accordingly okay by all the male writers so writing literary writing was considered a a male thing which the men can do very well the publisher was man the editor was man the critics were men and the reviewers were men and possibly the readers too were men so a woman fighting in such a male world is the victorian woman who should be according to the male values beautiful calm passive okay they should eat very less and they should uh, actually uh, be the angel in the house and nothing more right so we will come back to this image much later here we have the poet uh, uh, christina rossetti a painting again done by her brother dante gabriel rossetti who was a pre raphaelite painter and she was also the daughter of an italian scholar right uh, and their status was that of middle class and uh, we find the moral restraint in her in in her entire family who which was struggling okay during this time to earn their bread so uh, she is very rightfully considered as a successor of elizabeth barrett browning and uh, she she her recognition come came much late and has influenced many novelists like ford madox ford uh, virginia woolf and so on so this poem the text is generally called the goblin market it, it is found in the collection goblin market and other poems which was composed in 59 and published in uh, 1862 and is considered as a pre raphaelite ma masterpiece this uh, has actually uh, muddled all the brains of the critics this this poem because it can be uh, analyzed from the feminist perspective from the post structural perspectives and, and the myriads of perspectives are there psychoanalysis marxist historicist lesbianist uh, lesbian themes vampire themes can also be found here okay so that was very very uh, it it has undergone a lot of criticism and a lot of interpretations uh, so what are we supposed to uh, study here before getting into all these i would just like to give you uh, the 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 story of the poem so this is a very nice sweet easy simple poem written in very simple diction and just like a fairy tale this is the story of two sisters laura and lizzy who uh, basically they are um, living all alone in a glen and they are living very happily but there is something that they should not be doing they should not be communicating with the goblin men we will get into details who these goblin men are so the goblin men are some are are people men who are selling fruits 
and these are the fruits which maidens must not eat okay even listening to them is very very uh, it's very very harmful to everything around there is this is something very very forbidden uh, and as soon as they hear the morning and evening they hear the goblin men crying to uh, sell their fruits come by come by our orchard fruits come by come by they are saying all the time and these fruits are very very exotic and delicious to look at delicious to listen to very deliciously presented so there is an entire plethora of fruits even someone who does not like eating fruit will uh, become very curious about what this fruit is let me check it right so it is something like that so uh, the temptation is there in laura and lizzy but laura is the woman who gives into the temptation she goes and come she stays back and she takes the fruit from goblin men before she takes she is saying that i do not have copper in my purse i don't have uh, silver i don't have gold so how do i pay you and the goblin men are saying you there is much gold on your head so this laura and lizzy both the sisters they have beautiful golden hair okay so the goblin men are saying you can cut off a lock of uh, your hair and pay us so she does that and she takes in all the fruits the more she, she eats she is not full fulfilled she is unsatiated and when she is returning back she is in a trance in complete intoxication okay and lizzy is panicking what has happened did you taste the fruit laura is saying yes i did i will get some for you too they are very very tasty so uh, immediately after that in the next morning uh, lizzy uh, and and after that lizzy is telling the story of some genie who has um, who had communicated with these goblin men who had taken their fruits and has died okay and uh, there is there are very very symbolic descriptions of how this uh, this entire exchange with the goblin men is very very sinful and sexual and sensuous in nature and hence they are very very symbolic so uh, Lizzie finds that Laura is dwindling between life and death because she cannot hear the goblin men's cry anymore she cannot see the goblin men anymore but there is a kind of an addiction inside her and she wants the fruit she is craving for those fruits so much so that she is almost about to die it is then that uh, Lizzie thinks that she must save the life of her elder uh, of her of her sister uh, and they uh, not elder sister i'm sorry that was a slip of tongue so she must save the life of her sister and she goes with a penny in her purse a silver penny and she goes to the goblin men and she says i've got money so i'll give you this money you give me some fruits now the goblin men are saying you cannot take these fruits home you have to eat it here lizzy says that no i will not eat these fruits i will take it home but the goblin men will not leave it they try to and begins a a phase of violence which can come very close to molestation very close to rape they are mocking cajoling coaxing tearing her clothes and pinching her kicking her but and they are cramming the fruits on 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 uh, in, into her mouth forcing her to open her mouth but she will not okay so but all the juice the juice of these fruits is all over her body so when she goes uh, back uh, and and uh, and and after a brief period of time time we understand that the goblin men have failed failed they have lost this customer and they have just left and with this silver in their penny uh, she is now laughing lizzy is laughing and lizzy is returning to laura and when she comes to laura she is saying look i have goblin pulp all over my body my face my dimples you can come and lick it eat it taste it so laura tastes it kisses uh, and and sucks at her dimples and all her face licks everything so and and that and and she is saved this is a kind of an antidote that lizzy offers okay by risking her own purity her own virginity okay so uh, that is how the 
story is ending and that is how laura is saved and the poem ends in a very lilting background where they are telling their future children that look a sister is the best companion of a sister they can save you there is no one like a sister okay so that is what they are uh, making it into a into an oral story so that is how the entire poem comes to an end now uh it we can we can just uh, think who is this laura who is this lizzie laura and lizzie are two sisters who is elder who is younger what are their surnames well there are no surnames there is actually no surname and if they live together how are they living there is no family no head of the family no brother no father so where are the men we find that there is a complete division of the two worlds the man and the woman okay and the woman comprises of maids i have given the size subtitle the title of this slide the maids okay so the maids who are these maids there is laura there is lizzie there is jeeny and there are the future children when the story is being told to their future children even their fathers are not mentioned so what kind of sisterhood is this is this an anglican sisterhood um, this reminds us of the elder sister of christina rossetti who had actually joined the um, order of sainthood in her life and christina rossetti too is first rejected by her first fiance and she rejects the next two and remains unmarried all her life and she probably too joins this order so we find these two sisters christina rossetti actually had an elder sister who is called maria francesca rossetti and this sisterhood can be of blood this can be anglican sisterhood and the way the future children are being treated uh it it is also a validation of motherhood so uh, in this uh, poem what do we find we find laura and lizzie they are establishing a maternal world where the patriarchy is not allowed where the dangers of patriarchy are being taught to little children and how they should not be allowed into this world of women and this is very significant that in the 1960s immediately after rossetti had uh, written this poem which was published in 1962 written in 1859 uh, so 1859 so in uh, uh, 1860s in the 1860s she was she was spending a lot of time considerable time at a home for fallen women what are these fallen women the fallen women during victorian times are women who have lost their innocence or are prostitutes or they have indulged into sexual activities beyond or outside marriage so the, this this is how fallen women were defined during this time and there was a home for these fallen women so rossetti was very much associated with this uh, she used to visit very often and this can also be this this motherhood can also be uh, uh, present in in her uh, two lines of her poem sing song i've written it here motherless baby and babyless mother bring them together to love one another okay so motherless baby so this is not necessarily that the children future children the sisters that they are teaching are their own children maybe they are motherless babies and probably laura and lizzie are since they are unmarried they are babyless mothers so this can be the a story of the home for fallen women okay so uh, the next point here is christina rossetti and francesca maria francesca rossetti i have spoken already about them christina rossetti joins the order late but maria francesca rossetti was already always the purer one who was a saint who became a saint so these the the dichotomy between these two sisters can be found in the two sisters laura and lizzie okay so there have been many readings okay which which uh, validate the relationship between the two sisters uh, one say that they have they are the two sides of a single psyche 
uh, for some say that Laura is sensuous and Lizzie is ascetic. Laura, the word Laura reminds us of Petrarch's Laura, the sonnets that you must have come across while doing the origin of sonnets. And also Elizabeth is a very religious name which is associated with the mother of John the Baptist and the cousin of Virgin Mary. So uh, we find that they are two facets of a single self perhaps by or or they are two entities with different uh, sense of morality okay where one corrects the other okay one goes astray and the other takes her back into uh, the correct place that can also be uh, i don't know i have no way of finding out whether i'm going to fast or not whether you are understanding or not but uh, I hope that you are understanding and I and I am saying things clearly enough for you students. And uh, the next point that we have is maid. So maid is a pun on maid. You know what a pun is? Pun means two two words, which uh, w the sound of which are similar. Okay, but they mean two different things. So the maid is basically a maid, something M A D E maid, which has been created. So again yes they have been transformed into a work of art okay because laura and lizzie are characters in a story and again they are also creator of a story which they are uh, telling to their future children okay so in that in that story too they are featuring themselves so they are transforming uh, rossetti is transforming laura lizzie into a work of art, Laura Lizzie is also transforming themselves into works of art in their next oral story. So this is a story which is going from generation to generation in a very oral fashion. Okay, with that, I will, I will again bring you back to the very first uh, slide. Okay, just look at how uh, Christina Rossetti looks and take a look at what Dante Gabriel Rossetti had actually um drawn can you see can you see the striking similarity between the two faces the three faces in fact okay these are laura and lizzie they are sleeping together look at the goblin men here are the goblin men and here again is laura who is cutting her golden lock and it is known that uh, christina rossetti used to uh, pose model become a model for virgin mary's face too okay so she already considered herself a work of art so we can associate ourselves with laura in, in a more potent manner than we can even think and uh, so we go to from here we go to point number two an angel in the house so what are these uh, what is woman woman is born a, 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 a living being a human being but is made into a woman by the society this is a quotation of simon de Beauvoir. i'm not quoting it correctly uh, but uh, this is the crux of it so uh, again woman is basically the concept of woman is basically a made concept where she must be domestic she must be docile she must follow all the norms of the society she must be very passive she must eat less in order to keep her figure intact she must be picture perfect okay so an angel in the house let us see what are the things that they are doing laura and lizzie when they get up in the morning laura rose with lizzie fetched in honey milked the cows aired and set to right the house kneaded cakes of whitest wheat cakes of dainty mouths to eat next churned butter whipped up cream fed their poultry act and sealed okay so that is what they are doing they are actually producing food and feeding producing food and feeding okay so what are laura and lizzie and the women they are producers of food right in the next point i've written that they are basically producers of food homemade good quality wonderful food that your mommy generally your mother makes for you and they are also consumers of food consumers of food why because the goblin men are 
selling all the fruits to them to the maids alone and not to anybody else and once you are a fallen woman you cannot hear the goblin men right so women the these maidens are basically consumers of food too and you are also the objects of consumption woman as an object of consumption is always there because the female body is very important it must be perfect it must be beautiful there is always display of the female body in all sorts of acts even where the female is not required the female is always there because it sells better yeah. any product with a female face on it sells better because females are also objects of consumption we like to see okay and there is always the male gaze which is defining this is the perfect body of a woman this is how her hair should be that is not what a woman should be doing so you have done an introduction by kamala uh, kamala das okay so that is also very important why how women are becoming objects of consumption and as we move we move to uh, the concept the generally a general allegorical reading of laura as eve eve why because she is the one who is being tempted she is the one who is discovering the beauty of the forbidden fruit forbidden fruits of the goblins and lizzy as the christ figure the hero figure okay and these are basically uh, the heroic woman or now we use the word shero a shero lizzy lizzy a shero a model of female independence okay because she is the one who chooses yes even women should have the right to make a mistake they can make mistakes and there should always be a path of salvation which lizzy is offering to laura so they are models of female independence who do not need the male world around them at all and that is what the entire poem is all about so in in here is also a vision of a pre raphaelite world from a woman's point of view so this pre raphaelite brotherhood is basically a brotherhood because all the men here all the people here are men not women there is no woman if a woman is there she should be a model okay she is like a model who is painted with all kinds of religiousness and also of uh, sensuousness right so uh, here Ami also ekta uh, choto korte bolbo shomini dikhe karon amader hate shomoy khub kom amra program er ekebare shesher dikhe royechi uh, amar kache ar koto khon ache eta ektu bole dao ekdomi kom shomoye royeche to apni jodi ebar uh, arektu pa short e jodi ektu uh, uh, amader chhatro chhatrider kache pouche den i eta seta khub bhalo hoy ঠিক আছে মানে আই ডু আই हैव अ 10 মিনিটস আমার কাছে কি 10 মিনিটস আছে না 5 মিনিটস 5 মিনিটস ওকে ওকে 5 মিনিটস দেন রাইট সো দেখো তোমরা বুঝতেই পারছো আমার কাছে খুব কম সময় সো আই উইল জাস্ট কুইকলি গো টু দ্য নেক্সট স্লাইড সো উই আর গোইং টু টক अबाउट দ্য নেক্সট ইম্পর্ট্যান্ট ফ্যাক্টর হুইচ আর দ্য গবলিনস সো গবলিনস কোথায় কোথায় আমরা গবলিন দের কে দেখেছি গবলিন রা আছে পিলগ্রিমস প্রগ্রেস 1678 থেকে একদম হ্যারি পটার হ্যাঁ গ্রাই দিস ইজ দ্য দিস ইজ দ্য পিকচার অফ গ্রিক হুক এন্ড দিস আর দ্য গবলিনস হুইচ ফিচার ইন জে আর আর টলকিয়ানস হবিট অ্যাজ ওয়েল অ্যাজ দ্য লর্ড অফ দ্য রিংস এই টলকিয়ানের হগ গবলিন দের কে আবার অর্ক বলা হয় তো তোমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছো দে আর ভেরি হোয়াট ইউ সে দে আর ভেরি ম্যালিশিয়াস মনস্ট্রাস গ্রোটেস্ক দে আর ভেরি গ্রিডি এন্ড দে নো ম্যাজিক ওকে বাট goblin rosetti's goblins are a bit different because they have cat's face they have tails they are like rats they are like snails wombat rattle they are very diminutive and funny they are terrorizing they are men and merchants merchants kintu they are selling something and there is a kind of a brotherhood and i have already as i have said that they have a patronage of editors publishers critics and reviewers with them so so they are they form the entire uh, world of literature of of literary criticism now we go to the next slide very quickly so food food 
কি বায়োলজিক্যাল অ্যাসপেক্ট আছে নিউট্রিশন আছে এবং তার মধ্যে প্রচুর কমপ্লেক্স ভ্যালিউজ আছে রিলিজিয়াস বিলিফস আছে যেমন ধরো আমরা সরস্বতী পূজোর আগে কুল খাই না ওকে দ্যাট ইজ আ রিলিজিয়াস বিলিফ ফুড মানে শুধু ফুড নয় আমরা যখন তখন সবকিছু খেয়ে নিই না দেয়ার ইজ আ পার্টিকুলার টাইম ওয়েন উই হ্যাভ রাইস ওকে সো এ আর এই এই কবিতাটাতে উই হ্যাভ টু ওয়েজ অফ অফ অবটেইনিং ফুড কি কি না একটা হচ্ছে হোমমেড ফুড যেটা লরা লিজি বানাচ্ছে চার্নিং বাটার এন্ড एवरीथिंग which is not much attractive but and there is the market food of convenience jeta amader kache ekhon biryani okay all sorts of things that all the uh, swiggy has to offer swiggy and zomato and uh, so ei ei market food ta amra jei pacchi keno shegulo attractive karon sheglor moddhe labor nei they are very liberating for the woman karon woman ektu chuti pacche okay so we in in the food of the goblin market they are very sensuous they are very auto erotic and they are very appealing we have already uh, talked about all these how the foods signify addiction uh, appetite they attract and they frighten and also they they have uh, connotations of disease and death karon ekhane to bolche their fruits uh, their fruits are like honey to the throat but poison in the blood so they signify disease and death death of genie and also the food is offered by lizzy is the body of lizzy herself shekhane lizzy nijei bolche hug me kiss me suck my juices eat me drink me love me so here body is becoming a food right so we have almost come to the end of it because what are the aspects that that we must keep in mind while reading this poem we must keep in mind uh, the theme of sisterhood the symbolic and allegorical allegorical elements that are there the goblin men and their market the form and structure of the poem okay a a jinish gulo we have to keep in mind and there are many things that uh, which i could go on and on but i don't think i have much time uh, i hope i have been able to do something uh, uh, help uh, be of some help to you dear students এই ইমেল আইডিটা তোমরা প্লিজ নোট ডাউন করে রাখো ইন কেস ইউ ওয়ান্ট মি টু গিভ ইউ দিস পিপিটি ওর ইফ ইউ ওয়ান্ট টু কন্ট্যাক্ট মি রিগার্ডিং এনি কোয়েশন ইন দিস সেশন দ্যাট হ্যাজ এ রিজন সিন্স দিস ইজ আ ওয়ান টু ওয়ান ওয়ে অফ কন্ট্যাক্টিং ইচ আদার আমি আরেকবার জাস্ট ফর আ ফিউ সেকেন্ডস আমি আরেকবার এইটা দিয়ে রাখছি ক্যান ইউ সি ইট ইস জি সোহিনী ডট দোয়েল অ্যাট gmail.com okay so that will be the end of my uh, presentation i hope you all liked it amar mone hoy i have already crossed the limit isn't it srijita bari ashole amader kache shomoy khubi kom ar apni je tuko bojhalen onek शेष करते हम অন্যান্য খবরের জন্য যত রাখুন হাই নিউজে নির্দিক নিরপেক্ষ